Good morning, everyone. Yeah, God is just so, He's so amazing. Um, amen? Amen. So, Pastor Werner says, um, hi. Uh, he would have preached this morning, but he's actually preaching in Shafa Somerset West this morning at the morning services and also um, last, and also the evening services. And last week, he also preached at Shafa Stellenbosch during the morning and evening services. So he does send his love and he's looking forward to coming back. Um, he said we mustn't forget he is here in, our, in, in his heart. We are with him there. And you can keep him in your prayers as well as he ministers today. And it's just such an amazing testimony of a church that has the um, capacity to send other people to go and minister to other churches as we all belong to the greater body. So it's such a privilege. Um, I just want us to quickly close our eyes for a few moments again. I just want to pray again. Father, we thank you, Lord, for what you are busy doing in our midst, Lord. Thank you for who you are, Lord, and thank you for the word that is about to come. And we trust, Lord, that we will hear your word, that we will hear your truth, not man's truth, not man's revelation, but the word of God, which is alive and active. We pray, Lord, that as the word comes, that it will really touch our hearts, that it will really change our hearts to bring us closer to you and likeness to you. And may you get the glory and the honor through it all. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Hello, everyone. So um, I'm not trying to sound like Vanna this morning. My voice is just gone because my kids had interschools this weekend. So I apologize. Uh, it does sound a bit better now than I think it did the first service. Um, but yeah, the, the primary school thought it well to split the, the interschools into two days during uh, storm and rain on a Friday, so we, we had to endure, um, but it was all worth it. And then obviously uh, shouting there and shouting through the Springboks game and then shouting the Saturday morning at my older child's, older boys' um, uh, interschools as well. But uh, praise God, you can still hear me and we are still together. Amen. <laughs> So this morning, I want to share on something that is really close to my heart, um, pun intended, but I want you, before I share what's on my heart, I want you to share what's on your heart. So maybe just turn to someone next to you that you know, preferably, and just share something that is really close to your heart, something that your heart beats for, that your heart breaks for, something that you hold in high regard in your heart. Just share it with someone quickly. Not allowed to say the spring box. All right. There's obviously a reason that I ask you to do that, but we'll get to the reason later. For now, I want us to read Scripture. <laughs> I'm going to read for us from Psalm 24. Psalm 24 from verse 1, it says, The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and those who dwell therein. For He has founded it upon the seas and established it upon the rivers. Who shall ascend the hill of the Lord and who shall stand in His holy place? He who has clean hands and a pure heart, who does not lift up his soul to what is false and does not swear deceitfully, he will receive a blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. Such is the generation of those who seek him, who seek the face of the God of Jacob. Now, although the context of this psalm is not very clear, many scholars believe it to be one of the psalms David wrote as the Ark of the Covenant was carried into Jerusalem. So it's very much a psalm of celebration, a psalm of joy, a declaration of victory. But also we see with this psalm, it declares the Lord's sovereignty as it starts out with. And then with that, we also read something interesting. We find the requirements and we find characteristics and consequences for those truly seeking to enter into the Lord's presence in worship. Now, what stood out for me is clean hands and a pure heart. And when we look at that uh, part, clean hands, that clean actually can be translated, the Hebrew word directly translates it to the word innocent. 
So when we read the word clean hands, we actually um, read it's something that refers to those who acted innocently to others. And pure heart is a heart cleansed with unworthy motives. A heart that's not full of self, but a heart that glorifies God. And that part where it says ascending the hill, that is actually the same word in Hebrew where God called Moses, where he said, go up to the mountain. That go up is ascending the hill. Go up to Mount Sinai where he was in the Lord's presence and where he worshipped him. And that literally translates to ascending God's holy hill by righteous, by God. Uh, uh, ascending God's holy hill by the righteous. Now, last week when we heard about righteousness, Pastor Andres summarized righteousness so powerfully as being a state that is approved by God. Righteousness is being a state that is approved by God. Now, when we look at clean hands and a pure heart, the hands are the outward expression and they refer to our actions. And the heart is inward, is what's going on in here. It's how we think, it's our attitude, it's our beliefs, our thoughts. And ascending the hills, how we worship the Lord in His presence. Now, in this world, our hearts portray our thoughts and our actions. What's going on inside our hearts, what's going on in here, will eventually end up there. And I want us to think about that because it's quite a powerful thing, thing if you think about it. Because we read in Matthew, and this is shortly after Jesus did a healing on the Sabbath. He healed a, 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 blind, a blind man, and then after that, he also um, delivered a demon-possessed man. And as he was doing this, the Pharisees approached him. And they rejected his healings. But more than that, they did not only reject his healings. They also said that he who cast out these demons, Jesus, cast them out by the devil himself. Look at Jesus' reply in Matthew 12. Either make the tree good and its fruit good, or make the tree bad and its fruit bad. For the tree is known by its fruit. You brood of vipers. How can you speak good when you are evil? For out of the abundance of your heart, the mouth speaks. The good person out of his good treasure brings forth good, and the evil person out of his evil treasure brings forth evil. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. When we read this scripture and many others like it, it's evident to see that the hardened heart of the Pharisees was displayed in the way that they behaved, in the way that they acted towards Jesus, in the way that they displayed their beliefs and their attitudes, and in their character. Jesus did not have to spend a very long time in their presence to know that they had hard hearts. And so to us today, it's so relevant for us, you and I, we do not have to spend a very long time in a negative or pessimistic thinking person's presence to know that they are negative or pessimistic. Many times we queue in line at the bank where we're really being tested or you're standing next to the sports field and you can immediately pick up by the way people reason, by the way people think, where their hearts are at, where their hearts are rooted at. And this really got me to think, if someone were to spend five minutes in my presence, five or ten minutes in my presence for the first time, they've never met me before. And you can think about this for yourself as well. If someone were to spend five minutes in my presence and they meet me for the first time, what would they see? What would they perceive? Would they see a Christian? Or would they see the love of Christ in me? Would they see someone that is polite, someone that is friendly? Or would they actually see someone aiming for a life of holiness and purity and obedience to Christ? I want us to zoom in on this, this image, this concept of clean hands and a pure heart, and how it is applicable to our worship. Now, Worship is the way we conduct our days, our lives, how we live our life. We live lives of worship. 
How does clean hands and pure hearts affect the way that we live? Now, the obvious first observation is, when we look at this, is that the work of our hands, they are direct results from what's going on in the condition of our hearts, where the condition of our hearts are at. Who shall ascend the hill of the Lord? And who shall stand in the holy place? He who has a clean hand, who has clean hands and a pure heart. Our external actions and expressions, the way we conduct ourselves in this world, how we live, it springs forth from an internal root, from an internal source rooted in something that we value deep. That is why I asked earlier, what is something that you hold in high regard? What is something that is really close to your heart? What does your heart beat for? What does your heart break for? How does that affect the way that you speak about this? How does that affect the way that you act around others when that comes up? In, in sales, and I come from a, from a sales background. I was in sales for quite a while, and they used to use this analogy quite often. Some of you have probably heard it. If you squeeze an orange, what would come out of it? Would it be apple juice? Would it be grape juice? You see, when, when pressure is applied, when the heat is turned up, when, when we are pushed into an area where we need to, to make a choice or uh, give an opinion, what truly is inside of us will come out. Who shall stand in the holy place? Who can worship the Lord? He who has clean hands and a pure heart. Proverbs 4.23 so powerfully challenges us, but also encourages us. It says, keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it springs the issues of life. In the ESV translation, it says, um, vigilance. Keep your heart with all vigilance, for out of it springs the issues of life. If we continue to read in Matthew, we again find him at another encounter with the Pharisees. And he's speaking to them in Matthew 15. And he says this, This people honors me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching as doctrines the commandments of men. But what comes out of the mouth proceeds from the heart. And this defiles a person. For out of the heart comes evil thoughts, murder, adultery, sexual immorality, theft, false witness, slander. These are what defiles a person. Now, if you go and read that whole scripture, you obviously get more context. But Jesus, so powerfully in this situation, quotes Old Testament scripture, and he quotes Isaiah 29, because the Pharisees themselves go against the very law they so religiously profess day and night. They contradict themselves. They are hypocrites, and because of that, Jesus disregards their worship. That is what the Scripture tells us, because their words and their hearts do not align. Now, I don't know about you, but I would never in my life want to be in a situation where my worship is rejected. Are we vigilant and are we careful about what comes out of our hearts? Are we diligent in looking after the conditions of our hearts? If we continue to read in Scripture, it's so evident to see that most of us would really know it well. It's just so much, so much death in that, in that chapter. But what really stood out for me was from verse 39 to 42, when it comes to this concept of a changed heart. We read, after the Lord has spoken to the Samaritan woman, we see she was never the same again. Scripture tells us from verse 39, many Samaritans from that town believed in him because of the woman's testimony. He told me all that I ever did. So when the Samaritans came to him, they asked him to stay with them, and he stayed there for two days. And many more believed because of his word. And many more believe because of his word. They say to the woman, it is no longer because of what you said that we believed. 
For we have heard ourselves, and we know that this is indeed the Savior of the world. An encounter with Jesus changes your life forever. Forever. A heart bowing down to the Lord in worship, inviting Him in to become Lord, changes forever. There's a worldly concept, and many of you would have heard it, where it says, I was wrecked by the Lord. We've heard it before. I use it sometimes, but I like to follow it up and say, but then the Lord completed me. He healed me. He restored me. He renewed in me a heart. In 2 Corinthians 5 verse 17 we read, therefore if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. A heart that bows down to the Lord is a changed heart. It's a changed life. And I want us all, if we can stand this morning, while we stand, I want us to close our eyes. And I'm going to ask a few facilitators to come to the front as well. I truly believe the Lord wants to touch hearts this morning, and He wants to come and mend hearts. He wants to come and heal hearts, and He wants to come and restore hearts. He wants to come and change us. Just like he changed the Samaritan woman, as was evident by her testimony. And the testimony of so many others after her. We come to the Lord and we allow him to come and work in our hearts. We change forever. So while all our eyes are closed, for a few moments, I really want us to trust the Lord. To be vulnerable before Him. And to allow Him to come and work in our hearts. I'm going to make two invitations and after that I'm going to give opportunity to respond. I want to encourage each person here today. The Lord is here. He's in this place. And He wants to touch your life. He wants to heal. He wants to restore. If there's anyone in this place today that has never bowed their hearts before the Lord, never said, Lord, I want to make you Lord and Savior of my life, and you want to make that decision today, which is the best decision you will ever make on this earth. If that is you today, the Lord is calling you. Come to Him. Come to Him. And then the second invitation I want to make this morning is, for us to ask the Lord to help us to surrender our hearts to Him. To surrender the conditions of our hearts to Him and to allow His Holy Spirit to come and change us. Lord, help us this morning so that the abundance of our hearts will be filled with the things that please You. So that what comes out of our mouths will be a true reflection of a heart surrendered to God a heart close to God and a heart not far from God. If that is you this morning and you want that heart, I want you to trust the Lord. Come to the front so that someone can trust with you, to pray with you. For the rest of us remaining in our seats, I want us to remain prayerful for, for what is going on in this place because the Lord is truly busy changing people's lives. You're welcome to come to the front. If that is you, Someone's going to pray with you. We're just going to continue in the Lord's presence. Maybe there's someone here this morning that has a lot of anger, a lot of doubt, or a lot of unforgiveness in their hearts. And that is consuming your heart. And you're smiling, but the cracks are there. And it's evident what's going on in your heart is coming out in your life. The Lord is calling you today. Trust Him. Trust Him. Let's just respond to the Lord this morning. some more facilitators to the front please if you are able to pray with someone please
what is the Lord saying to you this morning? What is He showing to you this morning? What are we in our hearts? What are we carrying into this world? Well, help us to surrender our hearts to you this morning. Lord, we want to be filled with your things, with your truth, with your love, with your peace, with your joy, with reverent worship unto you. Help us to reach that place, Lord. Help us to surrender the things that are not supposed to be in our hearts to you. Come and fill us. Come and fill us with your spirit this morning. I believe there's still many. The Lord is calling and wants you to respond. Trust Him this morning. Trust Him for the healing. Just as He restored Peter on that beach, after Peter betrayed Him three times, the Lord came and He restored Him. Changed forever. Went on to change the world forever. Father, we thank you that you are the God who changes lives. You are the God who changes hearts. Thank you because of what you have done for us, Lord. We can walk out this faith journey, no matter how difficult it is sometimes, knowing that you see us, knowing that you are with us, knowing that you are not distant knowing that you help us to choose the right way. That your love for us carries us through that. I pray, Lord, this morning that you will help us, that that which you have done in our hearts this morning or starting to do in our hearts, Father, I pray that it will continue to grow. That it will not be something that we only receive here and reserve for here and then it goes away and it dwindles away as we leave this place, but I pray that it will be something that grows, that it will be something that burns, that consumes us more and more, will consume our hearts, Father, and that we will carry it into this world which so desperately needs your love, which so desperate, desperately needs your truth. Help us, Lord. Help us to continuously come to this place where we check our hearts and make sure everything is in order. And we ask the maker, the author and the finisher, to just come and correct again so that we can continue. Father, we give you the glory and the praise this morning. You alone we long to worship. You alone are worthy of our praise. And we praise you, Jesus. Amen. Um, I just would like to share, as there's been this call for us to be vulnerable, 
and allow the Lord to do a deep work in our hearts. I want to share that after uh, attending the encounter uh, course, the last two courses, how God has done the deepest and most wonderful work in my heart. And I want to just say, don't hold back. It's never too late. I'm, I've been serving the Lord and have known the Lord since a young Sunday school child. And I've gone back and forth over the years. And I w- even went into the mission field with the Anastasis Mercy Ship. And gave my heart to the Lord in such an incredible way there. But I've been through divorce and death of my husband. And my my heart has been broken over the years, desperately broken. But I want to say, God through Jesus Christ can heal and restore every broken heart and make you whole. And it's never too late. I want to really, really encourage you not to worry about people, what they say, what they think. If God is calling you and pleading with you to surrender, to surrender to Jesus, you will never regret it. You will be made whole. You will be restored. You will have peace. And I identify with every one of those women in the Bible that went to Jesus, the one who touched the hem of his garment, the one with the alabaster vase, the Samaritan woman. I identify with them. But they went to the Lord, and he restored them, and he said, Go and sin no more. Please don't delay. Today is the day of salvation. Now is the time, the acceptable time of God. He wants to touch our lives. He wants to renew us. He wants to make us such an incredible church, such an amazing church wonderful, beautiful body of Christ. We have to surrender. We have to give up. In Jesus' name, I share this with you all today. Amen. Amen. Just, so let's just respond to that. We are officially dismissing this service. Um, but if you want to respond to that,